Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay Nur Chuck, and this, my friends, is Wine Library TV. And we're doing a very interesting episode today. Um, Mott, we've switched places. You look very cute in the uh, original Thunder chair. I've got your angle now, Vignacs. You now get to see what the Mott's, or actually what I get to see every single day. I don't know. There's a dark horse chance, and I'm not kidding. I mean, we've done it a long time. It's good to change it up once in a while. Mott, what do you think? I think this should be the new set. I think you can throw it in every once in a while. Spice it. I disagree. This is where we're going. Okay, and today, what we are focusing on, my friends, is Pouli Fumé, a Sauvignon Blanc based wine from the Loire Valley, um, about a 2,100 acre area of land that produces very interesting Sauvignon Blancs. You know, the Fumé Blanc is, uh, uh, you know, which is what some people call it in California, also Sauvignon Blanc. Pouli Fumé, a very significant wine in the market these days, a wine that I think goes tremendous with shellfish, lobsters, a lot of fish plays, Greek wines, Mediterranean fare, and completely overshadowed by Sancerre, by New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, and by so many other categories. I mean, this is a very very intriguing part of the world, very impulsely awesome, impulsely awesome, just tremendous, sorry, tremendous uh, Sauvignon Blancs that I think go well with so many different foods, but also, and this is where I think this is a special episode, wines that rock the house by themselves. So these three wines today, they really range in that 15 to $25 range, we've got 20, uh, 18 and $17 a bottle on this. So I'm really kind of excited about this. Now, I'm also excited about a couple things. I wanna give a whole bunch of shout outs. I've been traveling, miss, missing a bunch of you. Happy belated birthday to Jerome, uh, to Rich uh, uh, Rizzatano, who's a great uh, Vaniac, uh, Blake uh, Watkiss, happy belated birthday, and a very special anniversary to uh, Jay Henshin, who's uh, celebrating, uh, I don't know how he's, you know, we should really celebrate him. 13 years of spinal injury at the Air Force, Mott. So let's give a big ups to Jay. Thank you so much for watching the Thunder Show. We appreciate it, Jay, on, on a much more global level. Um, so I'm excited about this new seat, and I'm also excited about one other little thing. We are not announcing the Oscars pack. The Oscars secret pack. Sunday the 20 something coming up, we'll link it up in a minute. We'll air that episode on the Friday before the Oscars, so you can definitely watch it that Sunday night with your friends. So Mott, link it up. The Oscar pack is in the hizzy. We'll give some free shipping too, why not? That's how we roll. There's a lot of people been asking if we're gonna do an Oscar pack. We decided to go there. Not a lot of time for people to order, so I'm sorry, I was kind of, you know, wasting a little time there, so I apologize. All right, three very serious Pouli Fumé wines. Let's get into the first one, Mott. Uh, the Domaine Marcel Lango, 2007 Pouli Fumé, 12% alcohol to a five, 20 US dollars. Again, remember, these wines are really interesting. I mean, you could find them in a lot of French bistros around the country. Um, you know, we always talk about how much I love the Loire Valley. I'm a big Sancerre fan. I'm a big Chinon fan. Bourgoy, um, Quince. I mean, I just think the Loire Valley as a whole, let's call a spade a spade, maybe the single most underappreciated area that produces wines that are appreciated. Make any sense? Makes sense, because when I think about Cahors or Maduron, they're not appreciated at all anyway, so, you know, so. Um, let's give this a sniffy sniff, because remember, you know, I have a feeling a lot of people will be watching for the first time. Uh, remember, smelling the bouquet, the nose, is a big factor when drinking wine. Way too many people just skip it. A little foreplay with your vino never hurt anybody. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Great lemon peel coming through um, on the nose, which I like quite a bit. Enjoying a little hint of like lime peel as well on the nose, which I like. Slight pepper components coming through, like a light green pepper kind of thing going on, almost like borderline basil as well. So limey, kind of almost like, you know, Mexican fare. I just got back, so I'm probably thinking about it, but like guacamole, except without the guacamole. You get a little peppers, you get a little lime. They're all coming through. Very zesty on the nose. Let's see what this Sauvignon Blanc brings to the table. Wow. 
this is extremely, extremely driven by vegetables. Heavy dose of green peppers and oregano flavors on the mid palate. Wild, high acid, little subtlety of like pure lemon juice. But this is a tangy, tangy little tangster. And I'm gonna tell you something right now. The acid is extremely well positioned to go well with a lot of different foods. I'm actually thinking of, of a fro- maybe like fried calamar. Kind of an interesting play with, you like that, Mon? You like a little fried calamar? I love fried calamar. Oh, you love it. Oh, oh you missed a great face. Um, yeah, I think this could be a calamar little play, uh, believe it or not. I also would probably pair this, God, this has a lot of acid. Hold on one second. And as you hardcore maniacs know, I'm a huge fan of the acid to cut through. I gotta tell you though, I dislike this wine. It's so disjointed. The green peppers are like so upfront, which are fine. Um, basil on the back end, almost like a cucumber peel. Very vegetal. I mean, this is a vegetable garden of a wine, which is normally a great play for me, but the acid is not pairing well with it. I'm just kind of disjointed with this wine myself. I'm gonna score this wine 80 points. I am not a fan. Uh, good thing with the 85, I don't know how you're gonna pull it. Would you think the same thing? Are we in the same place, Mott? Um, 80 point wine, 20 bones, disaster area. Get away from this wine. Write it down so you never buy it. I am not happy with this effort. I think it is a rip off, and uh, I think we're gonna move on. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't good out there. All right, let's move on uh, to the uh, Francis uh, Blanchet Pouli Fumé. Cuvée Celis, 2007. Uh, Blaché is a great producer. This is 90 points, David Shelnick. 18 US dollars. David is writing for Robert Parker's Wine Advocate now um, and doing a really good uh, job uh, covering you know, Loire, uh, Provence. He's doing a nice job. I'm, I'm actually pretty fond of his critiquing. 90 points is a good score from him. He's a tough cookie, 18 bones. Um, on the color, it's a little bit lighter. A little bit more interesting. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Also pretty grassy. I mean, this is like a interesting play. I mean, aromatically, they're coming across kind of similar to New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs for me right now, except with a little less grapefruit on the nose. This is definitely grassy. Subtle peppers again. A little chalkiness coming through on this wine, though, adding to the layer of complexity, which is kind of getting me excited about this wine. Let's give it one more sniffy sniff. Good deep fruit, a little bit of like a melon play. Let's give it a whirl. I'm in a weird place today. I like the body, it's a little bit more fuller. It's definitely got a good acid balance. I get a nice little star fruit play. This is, wow, out of all the wines, and you know what, Ma, this is where going to Mexico pays off. You should go to Mexico just to eat star fruit because I ate a lot of it, and I really honed in. That was like my homework that week. I feel like I've totally now honed in on what star fruit tastes like, but sourness, this has loads of star fruit. That was a star. Star fruit is bursting through this wine, which I kind of like a cantaloupe component on the back end now as I'm tasting through this wine. This wine would pair very well with your classic grouper, just like, you know, if you go to a Greek restaurant and they probably have a lot of Greek wines and if they have a couple of French wines and if you've never had a Pouli Fumé before, this would be an order play. Just a classic, give me the fish, don't put any butter on it, or give it a little lemon, no salt, real healthy, go to town on that grilled fish, whole fish, eat the eyeball, the whole nine, and try this wine because I think it would pair well. That being said, I'm a little bit disappointed with it. A little bit. Um, I think it's underdeveloped at some level. I feel like it's lacking a little interest. It's like that person you really like and if they knew one other little hobby and talked about that, that'd be great because they're one dimensional. I feel like that falters on this blanche a little bit. A little bit. Uh, I'm gonna score this wine 88 plus points. I like it, 18 bones. Can I get a wine from the Quince or from just Loire Sauvignon Blanc for 14 to 15 that plays like this, probably that's where I'm getting hurt a little bit. Um, but it is a good wine. Yeah, I'm going 75 over here. I just deducted five points just on a basis of where I'm seeing this. SS. All right, and finally, uh, the Michel Bali 
Le Loge 07. Poulet Fumé, 17 US dollars. Um, and uh, let's see what's going on here. Now again, the fun facts of the day are this. Uh, probably one of the best plays for fish in the Loire Valley. Um, and Sauvignon Blanc base. That would be a fun fact. If you don't know that uh, Poulet Fumé is Sauvignon Blanc, now you know. And not knowing, I don't want to get sued by G.I. Joe, so let's give a sniffy sniff. Good nose. A little apricot fruit on the nose, which I like. Uh, a little bit more golden mott, wouldn't you say, than the last two, which is nice to know. Also, vegetal and grassy and green peppery, but definitely um, a little bit more calm on the aromatics. I wouldn't call it aromatically challenged, but aromatically subdued, I would say. And so, I, I like that. Let's give it a whirl. Creamy, good bright pear. Good bright pear on the back end. Like baby pears, if you ever ordered any of those. I really like that on the back end. But I gotta be honest with you, again, lacking some of the excitement that I've seen in Puli Fume in the past. And I gotta tell you, it looks like it. Yeah, these are all 2007s. I'm getting a little eh about the 07 Puli Fumes right now. Because this underwhelms me as well. I'm gonna go 86 plus points on this wine. And again, at the price point, 17 bones, I'm not gonna recommend it. Let me give it one more shot, let me be fair. Little baby pears surrounded by maybe a little basil. And again, that green pepper, all three of them, it's there. It is right there. Um, unfortunately, it's just not doing that well. The weights are off. The balances are off, and I'm not feeling any of these efforts at the end of the day. And to do a whole show on a category to educate and go 0 for 3, that's what Ma and I talk about all this, it's just the worst. I mean, I hate it. I'm devastated right now. I know that there's a lot of people like, well, I don't like Pulling for me now. Everybody's pa his palate is different. You should never listen to a word I say or anybody else. Trust yourself, and if you like Sauvignon Blancs and you are a Sancerre fan, but you like the vibrance of the green, grassy green peppers that you sometimes get in New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs, these wines can be fantastic for you. For me, I don't know if it's a vintage thing. I haven't done enough homework on the 07 White Loire Valley wines yet to really know, but I've gotta tell you, this is a very disappointing show for me, even though I'm in a new setting that I love so much. I've gotta be honest with you, I'm pretty pissed off. Question of the day. When's the last time a wine or a series of wines pissed you off? I hope you join me in the Oscar pack. The Academy Awards secret pack is announced. It's down below. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world.